So, uh, the picture we're looking at is me somewhere around 2002 to 2004 when I had a rampaging thyroid condition. Um, you can actually see the goiter, um, uh, that slight bulge in my throat. And I'd been diagnosed as having an overactive thyroid when I was 20. Um, but no one's quite sure when it actually started, mainly because of the fact that uh, it's very often mistaken for anxiety and depression. When I was a teenager, I had the feeling that I was aware of things and dangers that the rest of my peers seemed kind of blithely disregarding but that was pretty much discounted as teenage angst and so on um, so I ended up seeing a counsellor when I was 16 because I was self-harming because uh, essentially an overactive thyroid turns your fight or flight responses up to maximum and doesn't let it go. So it's understandable to be somewhat anxious at that point. And one of my ways of coping with that was to give myself that shock to the system. Um, but I was diagnosed a year after I actually had the test because I went to uni in the interim and had an awful time. And when I came back, the locum who was going through my notes said, what you want for your thyroid? And I said, well, what's a thyroid? And getting that diagnosis was absolutely amazing. It made so much sense of so much, many things. And I naively thought that I'd have a course of tablets and I'd be all okay again. And in the end, it was 10 years from diagnosis to my eventual treatment with radioiodine. And this particular period of my life, the, is in the photograph because I don't have too many photographs from that time I refer to as the second floor bunker years now I'm really amazed with the difference of how I'm handling the current COVID-19 situation compared with how I handled the threat of uh, the Persian Gulf War, the second Persian Gulf War in 2003. I, like I said, massively overactive thyroid, um, also had access to the internet for the first time and lots of doomsday prepper websites and all of the news that was coming in about there were probably going to be dirty bombs and we would have no more than 15 minutes warning. So given that I was living in a council maisonette on the second floor and I had a little laundry room, I set about making myself a bunker just in case it all absolutely went uh, critical. So uh, I... I was very, very clear in my head at that time that what I was doing was absolutely right and reasonable and in no way overreacting. But I thought, well, there's two plug sockets in there, so if the mains power is still going, then we'll have power and okay so i have to prepay my electric and i'm normally on the emergency credit i'm sure that the people at the shop will still be open during that 15 minutes warning so i can run across there and top up and get back because i can definitely do that inside 15 minutes um i'd filled it with the sachets of cat food that the cat didn't really like um, and odd tins that I managed to squirrel away of things that we didn't really like, like tinned ham and pilchards and, and so on. And uh, odds of cutlery and crockery and 
uh, all we needed to do was disconnect the washing machine and we'd have a water supply and I was absolutely 100% serious about it. Um, my partner at the time uh, was not exactly supportive. He was very much of the mindset of, well, I'm not going in there if I can't watch my DVDs. I'm not going in there if I can't listen to my records. So by by the time the um, situation had de-escalated, I was in 15 minutes going to run to the shop, get as many DVDs, CDs, records um, and so on as I could and get them in this tiny, tiny room that was already full of a washing machine and old chairs. I was going to get the record player the TV, the DVD player, the video cassette recorder. I was going to get the kettle. <laughs> this immense list of things that I was planning to do, but I was so manic um, that it made absolute perfect sense to me. And that was absolutely definitely what was going to happen. And comparing my reaction then, when I was so unwell, and my reaction to the current crisis where there is very much a, a, an actual danger and this unprecedented um, uh, confinement of the entire population and I realise exactly how far I've come but the knock-on effect of um, all of that was that I became incredibly reclusive I've been having difficulty holding down jobs as it was um, but I would literally only go to the shop across the road because I knew them and I felt safe there. My diet improved massively when the 24 hour ASDA opened in my town because it meant that I could go shopping at two in the morning and not get bothered and not get harassed. And even walking through the town centre in the dead of night was less scary to me than engaging with other people. And I eventually um, became uh, resistant to the thyroid suppressant that I'd been prescribed. So it was doing literally nothing. So then they prescribed me another one and I had to have monthly blood tests because it can start killing off your white blood cells. And it started doing that and it was at that point that I was recommended for radio iodine um, therapy uh, where you essentially have... Um, Radioactive iodine, as the name suggests, and the only place that you use that is actually in your thyroid. So your thyroid absorbs all of it and it kills off a little bit of it. And so then you, um, uh, and so then you either end up okay or underactive or it has no effect whatsoever. Um, and the effect was near enough immediate and absolutely phenomenal because you don't feel yourself slipping into thyrotoxicosis. Most people who have that diagnosis, it is a surprise and they haven't actually considered that as a cause of their symptoms. And like I said, the probability is that I'd been experiencing overactive thyroid from quite a young age so all of a sudden everything just seemed to come back into focus and I was able to engage with the world rather than the mess of fear that my life had kind of become um, I started going back to college uh, to study film and it had been a massive effort and it's very strange when you have so much energy but it's unusable it's it's like your life is um, a shaken up pop bottle that's had the lid taken off quickly and it's all of this need to do something is just spilling uselessly over the sides of the bottle and over the kitchen floor and to all of a sudden be able to harness that energy 
and to be able to do something with it was phenomenal. I always say that the effects of the radio iodine was like somebody slapping a TV and the static suddenly clearing. And I find this photo very strange because I was such an entirely different person then. And I look at the room that, my, that I'm in and the objects in that room and I can't honestly look, see anything that is mine other than a bottle of antihistamine um, uh, that I was taking uh, for my skin. Everything else is my husband's. Um, it's even down to the birthday card on top of the fire, uh, the poster above the fireplace, the Laurel and Hardy clock, the little plastic figure of Leatherface and Mr. Pink, all of the video cassettes, all of the records. And the more I've looked at that, the more that those memories have become slightly less hazy for me as well. Because I actually remember how difficult it was to blow bubbles at that point. My hands kept shaking and I couldn't quite hit the bubble wand with my breath. And that bubble was actually weirdly an achievement at that point because I couldn't blow bubbles in the same way as even a little kid could. And I did a lot of things during that time that I wouldn't do now. But I'm a lot kinder to myself in that respect. There are questions that I should have asked the doctors. There are tests that I should have demanded that I have done. There are many points where I should have asserted myself and I didn't. And quite often I lament my weakness and I lament how easily led I was. But now, especially with the difference in how I've handled the current crisis with the imagined crisis of uh, the Second Gulf War, I realise that I couldn't have actually have lived any differently. It Asking me at that point to make those choices and to assert myself in that way is like asking a fish to climb a tree. And so now I'm a lot kinder to myself.